Now, sounding out a new series in which different pop groups and writers perform and talk about their music. Tonight, a profile of Yes, a rock band who produced some of the more inventive of today's sounds. We as we as a group and, and me as a songwriter, we we we're both still finding out about each other. Uh, the capabilities of the band. Oh, Mistakes in my music because it seems to me that um, people are trying and that 
risks are being run. It might be nice to have vocal harmonies sustained for a long passage over a very quiet guitar or something. Now you can do this technically. You put your harmonies on a loop tape, which goes around like this. You know, you, you record off the loop tape and then you just keep the loop going around and you have perfect vocal harmonies sustained for five minutes if you want to. But our singers can't sing for five minutes. Nobody sings for five minutes, you know, in perfect tuning without apparently taking breath. And so you, you, you know, you mustn't use little things that might sound really good but are totally inhuman. <laughs> Just done. 
so it's got more complex sounds uh, on it, different instruments. We, we have musicians in the band, especially Rick, who's capable of doing it. He's capable of playing a grand piano for three bars, a mellotron for two bars, and a move for the next one. Absolutely spot on and perfectly. And as long as one knows that the musicians in the band are capable of doing it, then, then nothing's too complex. <laughs> Strokes a couple of months ago. It hasn't really given me a great deal of time to stick my foot in. I did have the problem on the first couple of gigs where I'm already sitting at the piano going, I'm thinking I should be on loop now. And you move round to loop and you're playing around and you think I should be on organ now. And you find you're on totally the wrong instruments. And there's one bit where there's a break where I have to come in. I think it's pretty fun. I meant to come straight in with. I could I, I don't know a clue where we were. Something about the first gig I think we finished. Dead silence, you know. It really sort of all quiet. I thought, well, somebody's meant to play it. Now they all know the piece very well. So it's gotta be me. I think. And it something occurred to me. And must the gap wasn't very long, most probably only a few seconds, but it seemed like days. Theme from a from a, a flute concerto or something. I couldn't really play it, but it, it was a melody that went. <laughs> Just made scales, you know. And then I kind of I thought that's quite rocking. Then I kind of. Like, you can only work on guitar, you couldn't possibly do them on flute, which was... Yeah, I thought things like that, that, that amused me, that I could just branch off and say, well, it was, you know, that was a little thing to be about it, but I had a little something I could throw in, just, just for amusement, really. <laughs> I didn't think the 
sound that the BBC got was very good. I wish personally that you'd taken the sound from our, our console, our mix, because um, it's the most difficult thing in the world to, I mean, we spend hours mixing our music on record. And I think you, you did in fact record Yours is no disgrace, some of it. Well, that's nice because that for us is a group number that um, that's associated very much with the group and we feel very at home playing it. It's easy for us to play. And I think if you've got that one, that, that most probably would be the most representative thing.
Stephen Stills. 